Okay, let's talk about condos. Condos are kind of ubiquitous when it comes to Florida. I wanna explain some of the details and we'll get into some pros and cons. Here we go. I'm Sam and this is the Living in Tampa channel. We make these videos for you to understand what it's like to live and move and all that kind of stuff to the Tampa area. We're also a team of realtors and we'd love a chance to earn your real estate business. Give us a call, text or email anytime. After that, we'd wanna hop on a phone call or hop on a Zoom call and just process your situation and see where we can help. And yes, I do have a little bit of a black eye. My two year old head butted me the other night. Um, we actually had a new baby about 20 days ago. So I've been full time dad really since then doing my best to be at home right now and, and relax with the family, excited to welcome the third child to the family. Right now, I'm actually in a listing. A client of ours who reached out through the YouTube channel, doesn't live here, just has this vacation property here in the area and wanted to sell it. I thought this would be a great time to talk about condos. This condo that I'm in right now is in the Treasure Island area, literally a mile from the beach. You can literally see the Gulf of Mexico from the porch here. We're on the seventh floor of a seven story building. This is a nice property. You'll, I'll show you around a little bit, two bedrooms. And this property would be a great full-time residence, a great vacation property. You have all kinds of options. But I wanna go through a basic framework. We're gonna talk about proximity, style, size, and cost. The same framework we did for the Tampa Explain series. So let's go through that for condos. I know it's kind of a big topic to fit into this framework, but I think this will help me explain some of the details starting with proximity. Of course, the coastline is a little bit dominated by condos, but we have condos all over, whether they're just in random neighborhoods, they're on golf courses, they're in retirement communities, they're near the beach, they're near downtown, all over the place. When it comes to living right on the beach, condo is really the, the only way to do it. There's some houses right on the beach, but they're multi-million dollar houses. And there's just not very many of them because a house takes up so much more space than a condo. Okay, let's go on to style. The style of condos is pretty simple. It's an apartment, that it really is. There's some that are super unique, you know, super unique buildings and amenities. But for the most part, it's a giant hotel room. It's an apartment that kind of has that feel. Not many of them are architecturally interesting. Most of them are just big concrete buildings. Now it's not like block housing, but it's kind of like block housing. <laughs> as you get a higher budget, as you get closer to the water, closer to downtown, they become more unique. The amenities get more attractive, all these kind of things. But a lot of people, they want to be close to the beach or they want to be close to something very specific. And then they're willing to compromise a lot on the property to make sure they can be close to what they want to be close to. We all know the golden rule in real estate, location, location, location. A condo solves that problem a little bit. Let's talk about size. I have one client that has adjoining properties in like a nice building over on the beach. Those are big. It's like over 4,000 square feet combined. This one's not as big. Usually they're gonna be around, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 square feet. They're not gonna be super big. A 2,000 square foot three bedroom condo is pretty hard to find though for a decent price. When it comes to cost, condos vary dramatically dramatically. You could go from $180,000 all the way up to $10 million. No, probably not 10 million, 3 million for luxury condos, like on the river in downtown Tampa, $3 million at the, in like the Ritz Carlton building. When you go over to the beach, they become a different kind of luxury. Your, your value there is that you can walk to the beach. Your val value there is that you have really nice amenities. Like it's just kind of varies everywhere. I wanna go into some pros and cons, and I wanna show you this property. Let me show you this property first.
gonna go through some pros and cons. I think this is important because it's part of your decision-making process. That's why we talk about pros and cons so much. Pros and cons is a simple framework we all use to make decisions. It's, you know, the basic list you write when you're thinking about something big like this. Let's start with the pros of a property like this. A condo in general, low maintenance is number one on the list. It's like, there's not much for you to think about. Even at this place, like there's some renovations going on in the common areas. You're paying monthly to for them to maintain and update that kind of stuff. Like that's part of it. You don't have to think about it yourself. I have another client that just moved here and moved into a townhouse. Their biggest thing was no maintenance. They don't want to cut the grass. They don't want to think about the roof. They don't want to do anything like that. That's a big deal to people. So condo gets you that. Pro number two, those same people that bought the townhouse, and I'm talking about condos, but I'm gonna use to tell this story a little bit. Those people really wanted a lot of community. A condo is a way to get more of that. You live in a building with other people, just like at a townhouse, you live next to a lot of people. A condo could really help you achieve that community, just building relationships, having people to go to the beach with, having people to go out to dinner with, having people to go play pickleball with. I thought of pickleball, pickleball because there's this old club across this, the parking lot from this place, the club at Treasure Island. And somebody just bought it and I heard it might turn into pickleball, but I don't know. Number three pro is a, a condo gets you closer to things. So we talked about location a little bit earlier, but it would be hard to be close to the beach like this in a house. This is a $500,000 condo. You could not be closer to the beach for $500,000. Now, if you can go up to 900,000, if you can go up to 1.2 million, we can get you a lot closer. But for 500,000, you can be a mile away. You can walk there, you can get a nice electric bike, you can get there really fast. It's a cool spot. So all that to say that that pro is that you can get closer to the beach or closer to the city for less money. Otherwise, you just gotta spend a lot more. And look at some of these houses that are on the water, on the beach, close to the beach. These are expensive houses. Okay, let's jump into the cons. Con number one is, is also cost. So this is a $500,000 property. I also live in a $500,000 property and I have an acre and I have space and I don't have an HOA telling me what to do. That's my preference. That's my season of life as well. Like these are seasons that we, that we find ourselves in. So not just the cost of the property for a condo, but the cost of the insurance, which is shared across the building. So it's not as bad as a lot of properties. So you've got the cost of the property, you've still, you're still paying for insurance. It's not like you can not have insurance even if you pay cash for it because the insurance is wrapped up into the building, it's wrapped up into other fees that you're paying. Speaking of those other fees that you're paying, you're paying condo fees. So this property right here, the monthly fee is about $800. That includes some taxes and insurance for the, the building overall, but it doesn't include amenities. There's there's not amenities at this building. There are you know a lot of buildings where you, where you do have amenities. You have a pool, you have a court, clubhouse, things like that. Expect those to be equally expensive or more expensive. So that's something to think about with these. If you're trying to minimize your, your fixed costs, the condo doesn't really do that. Con number two, I hit on a little bit, but it's just less space. It is kind of an apartment style living. You're gonna have a small little laundry closet or community laundry. You're going to have smaller bedrooms. You're not gonna have big closets. Not that you need big closets and need all that stuff, but it is just less space inside and out. You don't have a yard, which you don't have to cut, but you also don't have a yard to like just sit in and sit in the sun. Yeah, there's still grass outside of this place. You can get to the beach really fast, but this is a little different. Con number three is the condo association. Now, it might be a reasonable price or the, the price makes sense, but then you've got some bureaucracy to deal with, just following the rules. And the rules might not be crazy, but it's just something else you have to deal with. And it might not be that the rules are crazy, but you've got that one neighbor that's just really intense about everything. Maybe you're that neighbor, no judgment. Just don't be that neighbor. Okay, con number four, Florida's not new. The housing market here isn't new. The interest in living in Florida is not new. We talk about this sometimes, and some of these buildings are just older. Even some of the really nice ones are older. Maybe they maintain them really well. You know, concrete buildings can last a long time, but a lot of them are just an older style. They're just not that appealing. Now, once you're in your unit, it might feel like really nice and updated like this one, but 
If it doesn't, then you're just dependent on kind of what everything else feels like. I mean, even as I'm looking out here, it's kind of like little beige carports with flat roofs and it's like nothing that like interesting about it. Okay, and the final con is non-linear appreciation. Single family homes in general appreciate in a pretty linear fashion. Maybe not that steep, you know, it's like this. Over time, they go up. Condos are a little more spiky. Right now, they're pretty flat. They're not appreciating that fast. The competition around them is not that intense. During the pandemic, there were way less condos on the market than single family homes. The condo market got super competitive and appreciation was through the roof. Now it's like flatlined, maybe even going down a little bit compared to single family homes that are still have a normal like competitive market behavior, not like bidding wars, but they're still appreciating pretty quickly and they're, they're a really good asset to own. Condos don't really feel that way right now. So in the long run, they still appreciate in a, in a linear fashion when you zoom out far enough, but it doesn't make as much sense in the short term. Okay, that was a ton of information about condos. I'm so curious if you would wanna live in a condo. And if you do, if you need any help with any of this stuff, we wanna hear from you. So call, text, or email anytime, and we would love to hear from you. We'd love to just see how we can help. Thanks for coming by.